Alright, hopefully everyone is back from a night of partying, celebrations, and resolutions that will probably never come true. I'm Barry and welcome to Barry Anime. 2018 was a year of some of the best and worst that anime has to offer. This video we will be covering 10 of the best girls 2018 has given us. As for rules, they have to be in the 2018 class, so sorry Morka from Recovery of an MMO Junkie, you won't be included in this list. Also, we will accept up to two characters from each franchise for the best list possible. But before we begin, we make videos weekly, so feel free to subscribe and hit the notification button so you can never miss out on the content on this channel. But before we begin, let's switch up that music track, shall we? Alright, hit it. Number 10, Shira L. Greenwood. How to not summon a demon lord. <laughs> This anime gave us another fantasy anime where our protagonist is stuck in another world where he's an overpowered character, so what's different? Anime like this in the past didn't have Shira, the goofy lovable character that wants to have fun and cares for her friends. Plus, look at him. Lie and tell me you didn't enjoy that. I did think about Rim, but Shira's attitude and overall connection with the Demon Lord was just stronger. And let's not get into the rim argument, people. Winner, Shira. Number 9, Silica Militsis from Grand Crest Senkai. Okay, this anime was often underlooked and slipped through the cracks of 2018, a monstrous year with some of the best anime to come out. So it's understandable. But this anime gave us characters and ideas all on their own, with unique story elements resembling that of ancient mythology. Silica was promised to another count, but ends up following our main male protagonist, Theo, after seeing his will and determination to his country. The two go off to war and battle many powerful foe, improving Sir Theo's reputation along the way, leading to a dramatic conclusion with the Mage Association. By the end, Theo even gets himself into a position to rule the entire land. But don't be fooled for a second because we all know she was the brains behind the operation. Alas, the two refuse the offer and give the crown back to the royals and instead settle down and go back to Theo's homeland where he rules. Number 8, Nagasa Origaki and Ayano Hanazaki. <laughs> ah yes, the age-old battle between the gifted and the persistent. After losing to Ayano the year before in horrifying fashion, Nagasa falls into a rage distancing everyone on the team, leading some of the members to quit altogether, only to have the girl that beat her join the team. Ayano, who was abandoned at a young age by her mother due to badminton related issues, hates the sport and is wondering why people play it. And for good reason quits it altogether, to later be forced to play again because of her best friend Elena. But after tasting victory, a couple too many times becomes a, you, you guessed it, a massive a-hole. Not all her own fault. You can blame that one on her mom and stepsister. But by the end of the series becomes a major in-game boss, which, to be fair, deserves much more than a 7 on MyAnimeList.com. Like, come on people. By the end of the series, you're torn between sides, both making valid points, whether through practice, their motivation, and actions. It's really a spectacular finish that the series deserves. We walk away with a satisfying ending for both sides and both characters.
Number seven, Rika Takarita and Akana Shinjo from SSS Gridman. Okay, so Yuta Hibiki wakes up in Rika's house only to find out he has amnesia. Not able to remember him or her for that matter. What does any good classmate do in this situation? Rika decides to help him out by fighting a race of kaiju and oh yeah, God herself. Give me the order to crush him right now! That way, Gridman will appear and I- uh... Rika is a chill, lovable, I guess slightly tempered, emotional friend who caught our attention in more than one ways. Twitter wasn't the only ones to notice Rika being the front runner for best legs of 2018. Seriously, the internet went crazy for her this year, having all kinds of fan arts, posters, recreations. Twitter is a strange place. All that being said, her running mate for best girl is Akana Shinjo, aka God. And what I mean by that is Akana Shinjo is literally the world's god. There's no need to bother. After all, I am. You're a god, is that right? Being a being able to create and manipulate everything and everyone around you has its perks. Which also means you become a major brat. She has the power to fix anything and everything when she feels like it. And by fix, I mean kill. Even though we never see her do it herself, attempt murder does still count, so yeah. Oh, did I mention she can also erase memories? and make it to where your mom is now her mom. Truly evil. By the end, both the creator and the creations come to an understanding, which ends in a happy ending for everyone involved. For now, anyways. Number six, Narumi Momosi from Love is Hard for Motaku. <laughs> Okay, if you have been on this channel before, then you know how much we love this anime. The show itself doesn't feel rushed after coming out a year after MML Junkie, but rather added to the elements that made it successful. The show focused on more of their outside world rather than in the game avatar. After discovering that she works at the same company as her childhood friend, this gaming craze Otaku and Fujishi meet each other for the first time since middle school. After some post-work drinking, they begin dating. Narumi is her own standout character that is easy to relate to. Being an adult but still enjoying anime and otaku culture, she generally relates to all of us. You know, because everyone is not still in high school who watches anime. Being an adult and having to explain the problems of the real world, she's had to battle all by herself for years. Luckily, she develops a group of friends that understand her and also enjoy the same things. And let's face it, she has the best facial expressions of 2018. <laughs> Number 5, Zero Two and Ichigo from Darling in the Franks. He told you to wait! Don't try to stop me. And now mainstream anime battles topics that are relative to us now. Yes, we are not fighting robotic aliens in space, but we have seen trouble in our own government and at least one part of our life know what it's like to be different. So I can see how people championed this anime in 2018. Albeit the plot of it didn't hold up in the second half, in the first half its impact cannot be denied. As for individual characters, they make the rim effect feel stronger. Because both of the mains make more valid points than who shall not be named. Be my darling. That's enough! Just give it a rest! You'll see him and then what? You lie to him again? Whether you relate more to the mysterious girl with red horns warrior that is Zero Two or the honor student leader that is Ichigo, both display character growth and are not at fault for the plot that crumbles underneath their feet. Any 
anything goes. As long as we're good role models for our kids. Number four, Maho Hiajo from Steins Gate Zero. <laughs> Did you really want it that badly? If I told you at the beginning of Steins Gate press run that we're coming out with a new season of Steins Gate and it wasn't going to include Kurosu, you would be angry and not watch the series altogether. And for good reason. Maho can't replace Kurosu, but it'd be I'd be damned to say she didn't come close. Hey Dad, I get the feeling he likes talking to you a whole lot more than me, and the feeling seems mutual. Maho did the best job you could do in the fact of replacing the main female character on the arguably one of the best anime shows of all time, and that's not an exaggeration to say. We died, and yet just because the temporal axis is slightly off. I can't stop her death from happening. The harder, the harder part is that she's the same in the same field of character molds. She's literally the replacement for her and doing a phenomenal job at it. She wouldn't be able to pull it, this off if it wasn't for a solid team of plots, supporting characters, and a successful backstory. I honestly wouldn't mind if she was the standalone romantic interest of the main lead. That's how well she did this season. Don't worry about it. Are you two planning a future date over here? Would you give it a rest for one? Number three, Karen Lin from Sword Art Online Alternative Gun Gale Online. I don't know where to start, whether it's the fact that there's an alternative animation that is arguably better than the original, or the fact that we could be interested in both the in-game avatar, and Karen's outside life. Having a high complex of a 183 centimeter, centimeter tall female college student, Karen has a problem of interacting socially. The solution for all this is having a small chibi-like avatar online games. After finding a game that allows her to be the height she's always wanted, she begins to play it, and quickly becomes very good at it. She sees this as an opportunity to honestly meet new friends and just get away from all her other issues. See this is why the series rivals the original. The character has OP tendencies but still displays a better supporting cast and a lead that looks to develop. For honorable mention. Usually this is the part where you go right to number two, but I felt like number one and number two were actually this close to where I probably have to explain them going back to back so you can understand why these standalone characters are at the spots they're at for 2018. Number two, Violet Evergarden from Violet Evergarden. Violet Evergarden. Coming at the beginning of the year and being able to last for so long on top of over most competitors is a huge accomplishment and really speaks to the overall impact of the character. Violet having no family when she was young was alone and at a very young age was also homeless and then found herself being shipped to war at a very young age. I, I really want to point that out. Children at this age would die but not Violet. She was actually a nightmare on the battlefield. And having no feelings and emotions has its benefits in war. When her major was on his deathbed and utters the, the phrase, I love you, she couldn't understand what it meant at the time. The plot was built around this fact and this phrase and does a fantastic job of really highlighting the character's emotions. Also being the only main character and having to carry the story is no easy feat. And then if you add the fact in that she is 14, you really and truly have something amazing and it should be applauded. To be able to stand a high of this pedestal amongst all the competitors that come out of 2018 for most of 2018 is truly amazing and is applauded in this video, obviously. Number one, Mai from Bunny Girl Senpai. 
If I told you at the beginning of 2017 and you're going into 2018 and I told you this would stand atop of all of the, the anime basically to come out of 2018, I know you wouldn't believe me. From the moment we first saw her in the most provocative costume in human history, we were glued to the screen, only to find out this show has a story, a cast of characters that goes together as good as peanut butter and jelly. From the cover of the anime, I believe that no one just looked at it and would have scored it, the theme and the story, and be able to compare it to Steins Gate, Nikki, Miara Nikki, animes that are known for the thriller aspect and narrative that you can look at and all must be certain of what the genre is. But this show is its own question mark. Throwing a provocative bunny girl in the first episode and then turning around and slapping us all in the face with a theme that makes us all sit down and stay for more. <laughs> Mai has the unique ability to face any problem that it you throw at her basically. And if that doesn't scream 2018, I really don't know what would. <laughs> and that's why she is the best girl of 2018. I hope you all enjoyed the list. Did your waifu reign supreme? You tell me where we got it wrong and who should be in the list instead. I will post the order of the list in the description box below so you can go battle out in the comment section. See you later 2018, it's been a blast. I look forward to seeing the channel in 2019. We will be formatting the videos like this for future videos, so thanks for watching. This is Very Anime, out.